Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be a fun day. It's a fun day because we're looking at advanced themer and my favorite features. We're not going to look at every feature on advanced themer because it feels like there are 1 million different things this tool can do. It's got something for everybody, uh, but we're just going to look at how I use it. I primarily use the structure panel and the builder enhancements, classes and styles, uh, settings. I do not use the theming tools. There are a few other videos out there on theming, but I primarily use the tool for the builder en enhancements. And so what Advanced Themer does, in a nutshell, is it makes building websites with bricks more fun. It makes it easier, faster, you have more information right in front of you. And I, I just, I can't develop without Advanced Themer anymore. I was working on a site that did not have Advanced Themer and it just felt, I didn't know what I was doing. It felt slow. Uh, I didn't have things like the class converter, which is awesome. It didn't have style overview. It didn't have the shortcuts, it didn't have class indicators. So we'll dive in and look at all of these things. And you know, we might look at some other stuff. I don't know, we'll see where this video takes us. But this is a fun video. We're gonna be relaxed, we're gonna play around. We're not being serious today. If you wanna skip around, feel free to skip around. All right, let's dive into the class converter. So if you come over to theme settings, inside the uh, bricks drop down at theme settings the class converter is under the builder tweaks and structure panel so there are many different things that advanced themer does i primarily live inside classes and styles and builder tweaks sorry i do not live in classes and styles <laughs> i live in builder tweaks and this classes and styles. So builder t builder tweaks classes and styles is more of the, I think the theming. So I don't live here much, mostly inside builder tweaks. But anyways, builder tweaks, structure panel, class converter. This is like your auto BIM uh, tool. It also transfers uh, classes and styles or, or styles from the ID over to a class. So the best way is for me not to explain it. Let's just see how it works. So I'm going to create a section. Let's just do it from scratch here. So here are some of the shortcuts. So what I'm going to do is click the section and that will create a section and a container. Let's do this short class style classes and styles and inside the container I'm going to create two blocks block block inside the first block let's do a heading a basic text and inside this block let's do a div an icon some text and a button so we have this kind of you know general layout here that doesn't look too good and I'm just going to go in and style this real quick on the ID level and you'll see why uh, advanced themer also locks the styling on the ID level so if you want to add anything outside of the content tab if you want to go in the styles you you can't it locks it you can unlock it so let's unlock it and style so I can show you what this tool does so we're going to set this to display grid we're going to use automatic CSS. We're going to do a grid two. add a gap of medium. Let's drop down onto the block. Also, you'll notice this little red line. That means I've got styles on an ID. It's like, hey, this is bad. You don't want to do that. You've got styles on your ID, but we're going to fix that later. Let's go to the block. Let's unlock the styles layout. Let's add padding M and Let's do a row gap of M right there. Okay, nothing crazy. The heading, let's just play around with it. Let's 
do something like this red color. Um, we're going to text align center. And let's just kind of play with this. I am a heading and it's Okay, so we got something like that down here. We're gonna do uppercase. So you'll start to see we're adding all these styles. Now, let me move some of these inside this div here. So we've got an icon, some text and a button. Let's just try to pretty this up really quickly. Do I know I made let's do display flex and row gap medium. All right, we're gonna change this up a little bit. Um, I'm gonna delete this div, no big deal. Let's delete that. Let's do on this block um, row gap medium and let's align everything to the center, center everything so it looks, yeah, you know, like that, whatever. Uh, button, I'm gonna delete the primary style and then just style it at the ID level, adding a background of this red color and change the topography to white, something like that. Okay, so we have some basic things done here and I'm gonna duplicate this so that we can see it doing it a different way here in a second. But let's look at this first thing, um, class converter is what we wanna do. So to do class converter, you right click, you hit class converter, and it's gonna pop up this dialog. And all this is gonna do is add classes to everything. That's it, it's gonna add classes to everything you wanna add classes to. And then you can prefix your class name with something like my dash class underscore underscore and then it's going to prefix everything so let's just do class dash converter underscore underscore i usually don't do it to the parent i usually do this to just the children but you can say just the only the single element the element and the children or the children only. So let's do element and children this time and you'll see. And then it says, do you wanna copy the ID styles? Yes. Do you wanna erase the ID styles? Yes. And then you just click this button, create classes and watch the magic happen. So again, it's just gonna put classes on everything we have here, create classes. And now you'll notice that this little line over here turned blue and all the ID styling uh, that was red is gone. We cloned this earlier so we could see what it was before. So now on this one, all the styles are on the ID, but on this one, all the styles are on the class. And you'll see over here, class converter underscore underscore class style. So it's gonna take the name right here and add it. And our prefix was this class converter double underscore. So this one's going to be class converter double underscore container, block, heading, text basic. You get the idea. Button, it's just going to auto BIM name everything. Super cool. And now we moved all the styles from the ID over to the class. So when you're developing and you're like, hey, you know, I'm gonna add this section, add this layout, do whatever, you sometimes start styling and you're like, oh no, now I have to go back and add my classes and that's the no fun part and that's really boring. Let's just ship this website over to the client with ID level styling, call it a day. Nope, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna throw them over to a class. So I'm gonna delete that and let's do it again. But this time we're just gonna do a section. We're gonna call this wrapper. We're gonna call this content. Text 
text. This is going to be CTA icon, CTA text, and this is going to be CTA button. So when you rename things in the structure panel, the class converter is going to use that name, which is cool because you might want to like lay this out logically like this is the CTA section and then use these names so that you can kind of control it. And that was really quickly. Uh, I did that very fast. So right click class converter and this time we're not, we're just going to do it on the children and then we're going to put, um, let's close this. I'm going to steal this name right here and use that as my prefix and you'll see what's going on and that's going to add it, but I'm not going to do it to the parent. So we're going to add that there. CTA dash section underscore underscore, add it to the children only copy the styles, erase the ID styles. Yes. And so what that's going to do is it's not going to put a class here because I don't, I just want this to be, CTA section, so I just kind of name that. You know, maybe there could be a setting, perhaps an enhancement where it doesn't do it. Because I don't I don't really want to do underscore underscore section. I don't this is like the, the top level for me, and I just name it like that. Um but on this one we've got CTA section double underscore wrapper, content, heading, text, CTA, and you'll notice. I'm like trying to point at my screen here. I'm like, you'll notice here, <laughs> you'll notice here that I named it CTA and double underscore CTA, double underscore icon, CTA text. So it's going to take that name. Okay, that's class converter. I could spend 30 minutes just talking about how cool class converter is. So now we've got everything moved over to the ID styling, we've got the nice blue lines. You want everything to be blue lines. You come in here and accidentally you know, add a border and automatically it's like, Hey, you've got, you've got this problem here that you just created. And that's another setting. So let me pause it and see if I can go find that setting real quick. Okay. We're going to be doing some jumping around here today. Um, because I want to show you where each one of these things are. So this is structure panel, builder tweaks, styles, and classes indicator. So go to your builder tweaks, structure panel, styles and classes indicator, and turn that on, hit save. That's all you have to do. And that will turn that part on. So we just talked about class converter and how you can export the styles um, from your ID over to a class. The next thing we're going to do is look at style overview. So I'm going to just add some styles here. 800 on the ID level and to do style overview let's go look to see where we're going to turn that thing on it structure panel builder tweaks area style overview and this just brings up a big menu uh, that shows you what's going on with your styles so right click it style overview you get this giant nice um, styling uh, GUI slash information center. It's a little bit of everything. And you see your desktop styles. Let's go add some something on mobile landscape. Um, and see what that looks like. So now on our mobile landscape for this feature, we've got styling. But it's also saying it's, hey, it's on the ID. So if you just wanted to delete those, you could be like, hey, oh man, we need to get rid of that. Or, you know, you can copy and paste those styles to the ID with another tool. We'll look at that in a second. But then it also shows your styling on the class. Uh, if you wanted to change it from center to left, you can. <laughs> if you wanted to change it, to secondary you can uh 
And so now you just change the style and it's gonna be reflected over here on your class secondary. So, you know, I don't, I don't really style things here, but what I do is come and check out what's going on. So if I can't figure out what I've done in another development session, I can come over here and quickly see everything that's going on on this wrapper. Uh, padding top is var space M. Um, and then if you click this button right here, boom, it takes you right to it. So I made a mistake and I didn't add padding to everything else. Why don't we just do that? Perfect. Style overview. Now we've got all of our paddings and then our row gap. And then if you want to see it, click it right here and it will take you to the section where you can find row gap. Um, same thing for every element. So style overview, uppercase. Let's just delete it and then go to it. So now there's no uh, text transform. So we got, let's just do one more style overview. Okay, so once you delete your style, it's no longer here. So that's why you're really not supposed to style from there. Let's do a couple more things. Um, so go back to this heading and then do a, oh my gosh, I don't have some of my uh, builder tweaks turned on. Let's go turn some more builder tweaks on. I wanna adjust the pseudo elements here. And there are some tweaks for the pseudo elements. So let me go find those so that we can explore style overview and look at the pseudo elements here. Okay, we're back in the theme settings here and now we're on builder tweaks, elements, and I just saw it, where did it go? Enable the pseudo elements shortcut. So when you check this out, it will display uh, the pseudo elements next to the conditions. So let's turn that on, hit save, and go back and refresh the builder. And let's see, I'm, I actually might have to turn some of them on Nope, there they are. Okay, so we just have all of them on. And I think, yeah, the pseudo elements. So you can turn off, like if you just wanna use, let's turn off before and after and just use focus, active and hover. You can do that. So you can even customize. I mean, it's so awesome. I, this tool to me is worth every penny. I, I mean, it just has everything you need. So we're gonna, Refresh the builder, come back and look at this, and now we've just got our hover, active, and focus. So let's select our class, let's select hover. It's gonna drop you into the hover. So before you had to come up here, click this, click this, click this, now you're in hover. So now you just click hover. I mean, on off, it's so easy. So on hover, we're gonna do a color of red and let's do a font weight of something like 900. Let's turn our hover off. There we go, okay. So the point is, is to go look at style overview and see if we have hover styles. <laughs> and it's so, it's so awesome. There's your, let's change that to 700 maybe Let's do, I don't know, something really thin. Just, yeah, just so you can see, like you can change it right there. Um, or the other option is to go to your hover and then click font weight and it should take you to hover, which is awesome, to font weight and you can just change it right there. All right, that's it. So that is style overview. I mean, those two tools right there are just amazing. I've got enable shortcuts for creating new elements. You can add to it. I kind of wish, a wish of mine would be that we could add other things to it. So I'll show you the settings here. So under builder tweaks, structure panel, enable shortcuts, 
and if you toggle this on it drops down this section and you can say I want videos so I, I turn I don't use a lot of videos or icon boxes or the list element these are the things that I use but you could even pare it down more I wish we could add on to this easier like I want the code element here I use code a lot I don't see it but anyways most of them are there I think we can probably request um, to Maxime and see if we can add some and I bet he would for us uh, so code element is one of my wish lists but anyways you can just uh, click at the top level here so if you click on one of these I think it will nest it so I always just kind of click out and try to sometimes it doesn't work with bricks um, there we go it's like you have to click in just a certain spot but then it adds it to the bottom and then here you go select your container let's add a block this 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 oh my gosh here let's just add a bunch more let's see if we can break it I like to see if I can break stuff and let's do the class converter and do break it double underscore um, okay so nine classes created 32 existing classes so yeah look it did all of them it did all of them oh my gosh it did them all <laughs> oh it's so cool why would you not want to work with Bricks Builder? I mean, come on. This is this is so cool. All right, let's, you know, and this is how if you're not used to using classes, when you add one class to one thing, it's going to add it to all of them. Um, blue, green. This is this is how classes work. So if you're not used to working with classes, this is why you do it. Anytime you use a class, it's going to apply that style to everything with the class. Um, another item here, I don't know if I have it on my list. Let's delete all of this. See ya. Man, it worked. And the builder is so snappy still. Like, it's just, everything is just working. It's beautiful. Bricks is beautiful. Advanced Themer makes it fun. Um... style and classes indicator there's all kinds of stuff that that does um, really the main thing that I use it for is here over here but there are also other things that it does so if you here let me pause video and go find the setting real quick okay highlight classes so this says when this option is checked a blue outline will appear on all the elements that share the same class so why why does that matter so if you duplicate this a bunch of times and you click this and select that style it puts this box around everything that has that style that is you don't know you need this stuff until you get used to using it so that in itself to me i use it all the time because i'm like okay here's all my headings um I might have a global H2 class or something. I don't know. Some some class. Or I want to see this one and see where it's at. Maybe one of them should have it. Or maybe I accidentally had it over here. On This is my CTA text here. And maybe I accidentally added a class here. Let's try it. CTA dash section text so now we've got we're on this thing we clicked it and I'm like one of these is not like the other so this one doesn't have it this one doesn't have it so like what did I do oh well awesome like if I don't have that option checked I would never know that I might just be working so that right there to me is really cool Come on, I mean, what do you want? 
What more do you want? Like it, this blows me away. I, I can't, I can't recommend this product more. And hey, I'm not getting commissions. I'm not a not an affiliate. There is no link to buy it. It's just like this is a no-brainer tool. This is a no-brainer tool. And I only promote these things that actually I use. So if I don't use it, I'm not going to promote it. No-brainer tool right there. Um, there are a few others. So this one says count classes and navigation. Let's turn that on and go see what that does. Let me save, refresh, and let's click it and then see. So what this says is used classes on page four. Not as powerful as the highlighting, but still, it's, it's it tells you like you've used this class four times on the page. To me, that's really cool. I really like that. That is a really nice feature. Um, auto complete suggestions on hover, plain classes. There are so many things. I'm just going over what I use. The breakpoint indicator when this option is checked, you'll see a new small device icon next to each group that has the style set on a different break breakpoint inside the style tab. Okay, this demo is going to be for the style indicator per breakpoint. And we're gonna add another section and a heading just so that you can see it. And we're gonna call this test style, just some class. And so what this is gonna do is if you go to topography and add a color at the desktop, it's gonna pop up an icon. If you drop down to mobile landscape, add a new color, it's gonna pop up an icon. So it's gonna tell you where your styles are applying which is really handy for things like font size, um, unless you're using fluid spacing, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe you had some like alignment, you wanted to align left here. Let's clear the colors out. So now you know that there's no styles, but here it's like text align left, and then here it's text center, something like that. And then when you click to it, it's going to take you to that. So if you see here, these things are synced right here. And to me, that's a really great feature. It just helps things. It'll show you, hey, we've got a background color here and a background color here, you know, different. Here are your styles. And it, it kind of is a similar thing to um, the style overview. It's kind of similar but it like puts it um, in your styles tab here so uh, that is a really great feature and I turn that one on as well every time I use the tool let's see there's another one like this right here copy class to clipboard I'm getting like way off of my I'm getting way off of all the stuff that I wanted to do but Copy class to clipboard. So let's copy that. Let's go to the CSS. Let's drop it in. There you go. You might have to add the dot, but um, I'm pretty sure there is, watch this. This is cool too. So we're back over in the classes and styles and let's do suggestion drop down for CSS variables. I think it's this one right here. Suggestion drop down. Let's save that. Refresh. I think that's what it is the one we want. What I think that's going to do. Yeah. So now it brings up our autocomplete. So color black. Um, Gap, space, hold on. I think 
I think it will auto complete the automatic CSS variables because I have another site where it does. I just probably don't have it turned on correct. Okay, everyone, sorry for the little cut in video there. I'm not really sure what it was, but okay, here's how you get the most out of advanced theme. Or here's a pro tip. You go to it, you click toggle all, <laughs> go click save. <laughs> so what I, what I wanted was the automatic CSS variables to pop up here and they weren't loading. And I'm not exactly sure which one of these <laughs> it is. So what I did was I toggled all and said go. So that's the only downside. I mean, there's only one downside to advanced themer and that is there are so many enhancements that have come in less than a year. I think this came out Black Friday 2022 around there. I, I got the LTD then. I saw it. It looked really cool. I bought it. Um, there was a second LTD. I don't know if there's going to be a third. If there is, buy it. But anyways, that's the only downside. There are almost, it does almost too many things. So I just turn them all on. <laughs> if you ever see some of my other videos, you'll look at it and see all this stuff all over the place, which again is kind of another downside. They... Advanced Themer has done a great job at making sure everything is as clean as possible. Um, but now we're getting like, what, this is 30 minutes into this video, and now I'm like, I'm definitely off my script. <laughs> Let's just throw the script in the class. I'm going to keep my lightning bolts, so throw the script in the trash because there's just too much that it does. But anyways, now I think... I was debugging for a while, but I think what I was showing was the copy class to clipboard... You come over here, um, you look at it, and then you can say gap space L. And what it's going to do is it's going to auto-complete everything. Uh, one thing is if, you, if you're here and you're like, hey, I want to do space M, don't do that because it's going to like auto-complete everything. I don't know if we can enhance that. It would be nice if it would just replace the text. But anyways, what you do, you put your gap, space, M. You know, you wouldn't put you wouldn't put gap on a text, but you know, maybe something right here. Copy class clipboard. You know, maybe we could also copy the dot. A lot of times I want the dot. Um, you can also type root, but you know, in this case we're just showing that. Um, so it's gonna when you type G and then you get all of your different uh, CSS properties gap space M. Um, so that's really really handy. Um, important is autocomplete too, so that's nice. Yeah, so that's how that that works. Um, let's delete that. Let's go and look at a couple other things. Okay, so let me move me out of the way let's go to the heading we've got some styles here we've got some styles here we've got some styles here so we have all these styles on the id we can see our style overview what they are okay now we want to copy import styles from the id element so i th think how this is going to work is we're going to click the class, we're going to import the styles, confirm, and now all of those should be over on your, yeah, boom, look at it. <laughs> I'm over here dancing. Well, I mean, look at it. Look what it did. It took the styles from the ID and it put them on the class in the thing where you can change them here. Okay, we don't want that. Whoops, made a mistake there. Ooh, no, we just, you know, maybe here we want, something different but you can make these quick little changes here border top let's do 15 Ooh, no that's supposed to be 700 text align center that's good the only issue you know again is you can't you can't add to it here it'd be kind of like i don't know how we would do that do we have any other pseudo styles no there's also this little button right here that will show you the actual css that bricks is outputting 
So I think I have the chain classes on. If you know what the chain classes is, I'm not totally sure. But it'll show you the CSS right there. That's what it's writing. So you can see it. You can't edit this, but you can copy it to clipboard. Um, nothing on the ID. Super cool. Um, I'm going to have to make probably a part two to go over a bunch of these. But the last thing we're going to look at is clone class. Clone class is awesome. So let's do a clone class here. Demo. So I'm going to add a section. And this is going to be just test section. I'm going to add that class. And now let's say I have another section that I want to be dark. What I can do is click clone class. And it's going to drop this little GUI down, this interface here, and then put dash new. But I'm going to do double dash dark and then click save. So I just cloned all the styles from this to this. Now, we didn't add any styles, but if you had some. So let's say we had a line start. Hold on. Let's get on our class. A line start. Cross axis center. Column gap. XL. Um, order negative one, something like that. But I wanted this to have a dark background. I wanted to use this same layout, but I wanted it to have a dark background. I've got some styles on the ID. What are they? Let's just go ahead and unlock the class and delete those. Get out of here. And clone that class to a dark section. So click clone class, double dash dark. And so now I can put a dark background on that class and bring over all the styles that I've already had, you know, already had from this one over to this one. Oh, yeah, sorry, messed that up. Yeah, delete that. Come over here. Background dark color. So now I've got that. So let's duplicate that section. This one's going to be the section light. This one's going to be section dark. We'll remove our dark class. Come over here, remove our light class. But it's got the same styling. Everything's the same except for that dark modifier. So we can clone that class and move everything over and then just make a quick, you know, modifier which I think is really cool. So I'm gonna end the video at 40 minutes. Um, I think we got through most of this here. Style indicators in the media queries panel. Media, yeah, we, we went over that. Um, found one little item there of refreshing that we're gonna bring up, but anyways, global settings, all kind. you can export your theme so like me, like if I have one that I like and I forgot all the different things I turned on, I can export it. There's some Gutenberg settings, builder permissions per user role. I mean, I, it would literally take four hours to go through all of this stuff. There's some builder tweaks here that we can enable and disable. Dark mode toggle, dark mode button. Um, there's the front end playground that I've been using the AI a lot. So you can add your API key for open AI here. I have it on this site, but you can add it and it will generate text from chat GPT. It'll generate CSS. It'll generate JavaScript. Be careful with your JavaScript. Make sure you know what you're doing there, but Hey, it's integrated. So I'm just going to, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop now because I just, I could keep going on and on and on. And I've been wanting to do this video for a while, but there have been so many new features coming out that I needed to take a break and just let them roll out and see what they were. Again, this was a fun video. This wasn't meant to, you know, be anything too serious. Just, just if you haven't picked up Advanced Themer, you should buy it and play with it. Take four hours out of a Friday for call it research and development day, and then see how all of this stuff works because I didn't, I don't even, I don't even think I've, 
there's some other like nice things. I'm gonna have to stop this video or else I'll just keep going. But you can do all kinds of other stuff here, like hide elements. There's a hide element button, all kinds of other stuff. So anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll do some more videos like this where we're just playing around, see how Bricks is working. And just have fun with it because building websites should be fun. If this is your job, it should be fun. And Advanced Themer makes it fun. Thank you, Advanced Themer. Thank you, Maxime. That's just an amazing tool. I love it. And I think you will too. It is Aperture Digital Endorsed for, for what it's worth. <laughs> and again, no affiliate commissions. I'm doing this because I like the developer. He's a really nice guy. The Facebook group is great. Uh, it's just it's just a pleasure to build websites with this tool. Uh, thanks and have a great rest of your day. See you later.